As it was meant to be, the San Francisco 49ers and the Dallas Cowboys in the divisional playoffs Sunday. Uh, it will be epic. I am sure the biggest stories, key matchups, and predictions coming up on this crossover. Locked on 49ers, locked on Cowboys. You are locked on 49ers. Your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to another Locked On Podcast Network crossover episode. Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker here of Locked On 49ers. we got Mark and Marcus Mosher of Locked On Cowboys, and it will be a doozy, I am sure. Thanks, everybody, for making Locked On 49ers and Locked On Cowboys your first listens here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And, of course, Crossover Thursdays are presented by our friends at Price Picks. Price Picks is so much fun, and it's easy to play. No competing with other players, just you versus the projections available at prize picks pick two to five players if they score more or less than their prize picks projection you can win up to 10 times your money on that entry it can literally take less than 60 seconds to enter it's that easy we love prize picks we know you will too first time users can receive a 100 percent instant deposit match up to 100 with promo code locked on that's prizepicks.com promo code locked on Biggest stories. I mean, the biggest story is just going back in history and like, oh, yeah, you remember that one game that happened in 2012? Oh, you remember the game that happened in, in 1995? You remember that game? You remember when uh, when Charles Haley was on this team? Oh, remember when Charles Haley was on that team? And then you talk to someone's dad and it's like, oh, well, what about the 70s? There was this and that. So, I mean, this this rivalry is awesome, especially when it comes to the playoffs with the 49ers and the Cowboys. And Marcus, Croc and I were both hoping the Cowboys were going to win this game. The Bucks were clearly an easier path to the Super Bowl, potentially, but one of the Cowboys, like this is what it's all about. Yeah. It's not the NFL playoffs without the Cowboys and 49ers playing each other. Right. And having this game be the divisional round uh, after both teams got big wins last weekend just feels right. Feels absolutely right. Well, what's the biggest storyline right now, aside from obviously the rivalry and stuff? Well, what's the biggest story going on with the Dallas Cowboys this week? Well, I, I thought you were going to say not including the kicker who missed four straight extra points. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to talk about kickers on this podcast. We get so many other things to talk about. Uh, but it's no changes, right? They're, they're, they're not bringing anybody in. They're not even talking about bringing anybody in. Yeah, I just think they're going to keep him for kickoffs, and that's probably the only time you're going to see him on oh, Sunday. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Cowboys just don't kick. Um, wow. So predicting a 49er shutout, okay, a little teaser well, there for the end of the a yes. lot of two-point conversions <laughs> for Dallas. But uh, story is Dak, right? Dak Prescott played, I think, the best game of his life against Tampa Bay through five touchdowns, was almost flawless in that game. He hasn't always been that way this season. He's had some turnovers. He actually tied for the most interceptions in the league this year. But the Cowboys in general, the offense has been really good. If Dak can play at that level throughout the rest of the playoffs, I, I mean, I, I'm not giving my prediction right now, but I don't see any way that anybody's beating him. If he can play at la that level, we'll see if he can do it on Sunday. So, so Marcus, that's a big question. And um, I was talking to my big brother earlier today. Huge Cowboy fan, loves your show as well. And his biggest question, my biggest question is the consistency, right? And we're talking about this matchup. Two brothers, we grew up kind of going at it because of this matchup. And for me, I'm like, dude, I know who the 49ers are. They are the same team every single week. They are very consistent. Uh, with the Dallas Cowboys, it feels like it's been far less consistent. And especially, you know, as it pertains to the quarterback play, I mean, you go back, you know, a little bit over a week ago, watching Dak against Washington, I believe that was probably his worst game in his NFL career. But, you know, turn, the most interceptions in the league, uh, you know, missed five games, still led the league in interceptions. I don't think that's as ideal. But, you know, you watch them. How confident do you think that the version of Dak that we saw a few days ago is the version that will show up this weekend in Santa Clara? First of all, shout out to your brother, longtime listener of the Locked On Cowboy podcast. So we appreciate the yeah. support. But uh, if the Cowboys can protect him as well as they did against Tampa Bay, I've got the most faith possible that Dak is going to be fine. Where they've had issues this year is a lot of turnover on the offensive line. They've had injuries at right tackle. Uh, left guard has been a position that's been up and down. They've had some different left tackles. When Dak doesn't feel comfortable in the pocket, it's when he starts to throw off his back foot a little bit. It's when he starts to make decisions that he usually wouldn't make. But when he's kept clean, he can absolutely dice your, your defense apart. 
unfortunately, San Fran's got a pretty good defense and a pretty good pass rush. So it's going to be one of those things like, can they keep him upright? Can he stand tall in the pocket and make throws? If they've got guys around his feet and around them all game, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he struggles. When it comes to the defense, I almost feel like with the Cowboys defense, there's something similar going on there where, you know, at, at a certain point in the season, a lot of people were talking about, okay, who's the best defense in the league? Is the 49ers or the Cowboys? And then there's games where the Cowboys dominate an opponent. Uh, you're talking about the off the air. We're talking about that Minnesota Vikings game. And then there's games where like, well, what's going on with this Cowboys defense? How come they're getting scored upon so easily and, and giving up big plays on the back end? So that is basically a similar thing. It's like, you know, uh, the consistency on that defense. What what is the reason for that inconsistency? There, there's one type of quarterback that they do very well against, and it's the pocket passers. Right? You saw how they 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 dominated Brady last week. They dominated Matt Stafford early in this year. Kirk Cousins, um, Joe Burrow. They beat Joe Burrow with a backup quarterback. They are very good against the stationary quarterbacks. But when you get some of these mobile guys that are going to get outside the pocket and make plays with their legs and their arms. The coverage breaks down and the pass rush breaks down. So that's really been the inconsistencies. And then the tackling, right? When they don't have Leighton Van Der Esch in the lineup, the tackling is just poor. And the, they've had a lot of injuries in the secondary. The backups don't tackle particularly well. We know Kyle Shanahan is going to make these cornerbacks tackle. That's the biggest area of concern. It, otherwise, Cowboys do match up pretty well against the San Fran offense. So, do you consider Brock Purdy mobile? Well, he's mobile enough, right? That's that's probably the right answer. He's not really going to scare you with his legs, like he's Correct. not. He, he he's not Lamar Jackson. He's not he's not any of those guys. But can he break a tackle, get outside the pocket, and find Brandon Ayuk and throw an absolute dime in the back of the end zone? Absolutely, and that's where it's going to be fun watching him against this Cowboys defense. I guess. The, I mean, the the quarterbacks are the big story, right? Because we oh, talked yeah. about inconsistency with the Cowboys. Croc, would you agree? It's almost too consistent with Brock Purdy. Literally, the sev- the last pick of the draft. We like we've never seen this. Even Brady, it wasn't like right out of the gate. You know, first year rookie year. All of a sudden, he's like, okay, here here's this guy that's you know top three in the league at every important stat since he's been starting uh, as a rookie. Seventh round pick. Is it too consistent? Is 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 Purdy due to throw a stinker of a game crock well i think everybody's been kind of waiting on that down to earth moment and it's like all right this is when it's going to happen and you and i we waited for that moment as well we've been skeptical okay can he keep this up it, you know this isn't the play of someone that was drafted in not just in the seventh round the last pick in the nfl draft so we've been waiting on it and then you see the first half against the Washington Commanders, and you're like, okay, like th- we we knew it was coming at some point, and then the second half he lights it up, mm-hmm. and then uh, Seattle Seahawks game, you know, he comes out and it's kind of flat in the first half, he, you know, throws some bad pass, and you're like, all right, like the moment's too big, and then second half he comes out, he lights it up, so. I'm done doubting anything that this kid is. I feel like every time we've had questions, he's come back and he's answered the bell. So if you are, you know, listening to 49er content creators and they're very bullish on them or or you hear from fans and you see it on social media and they're very bullish on them, I, I think it's because of what he's done. And if you listen to the players, they are very bullish on him. And it's a lot of it is just how he has played in, in pretty much any type of situation that you could put him in. So now I hear my big brother, Dallas Cowboy fan say, oh, we just got to pressure him. I'm like, dude, I, I've seen teams pressure him, and he might miss a throw here and there, and then he's going to make some plays, and he's going to make some throws. And when he – and then there's times where he doesn't have to do it all because, oh, I got Debo Samuel that can catch a 10-yard pass and take it 74 yards. Or I have – George Kittle, who can catch a five-yard pass and take it 60 yards. So uh, even when it's not going as perfect, those guys bring him back, and then all of a sudden his confidence is back, and that spark was in his eye, and he's making plays. So uh, I know Cowboy fans are going to listen to this and be like, oh, man, they're just they're so hyped over him. And it's like, dude, how could you not be? Look what he's done since becoming a starter. Has not lost, and he's top one, two, or three in pretty much every quarterback statistical category that you can put out there. So it's him. He's the one doing it, you know? So, I mean, We'll, we'll continue to see, but it's, it's hard to say he hasn't played that well. He he deserves all the flowers. Right? I actually don't think he's gotten enough credit for how well he's played over the last six weeks. Now, 
you could be a little bit of a skeptic and say, okay, well, look at the defenses, right? They played the Raiders. They played the mm. Cardinals. They played Seattle. This is going to be the best defense he plays so far and maybe all year. And if he passes this test, I don't know how we can't think that he's not for real, you know? That's a great teaser, Marcus, because that's one of the key matchups here is, is how – Brock Purdy is defended by the Dallas Cowboys coming up next. Key matchups. We're going to make some predictions as well for divisional playoff football. Dallas Cowboys at San Francisco 49ers next. Today's episode is brought to you by betonline.net, your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis this season. 49ers favored by three and a half at home over those Dallas Cowboys. You can get all the latest odds and trends for every professional league and amateur league out there. Of course, all the playoff lines for NFL football, uh, Super Bowl um, odds and props and draft props are popping up all the time at Bet Online. And of course, college hoops, women's hoops, you've got uh, NBA, you've got tennis, boxing, MMA, you name it, you can find it at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, and I know you do, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. Always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting information. Head over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more at BetOnline, where the game starts. Thanks again, everybody, for making Locked On 49ers and Locked On Cowboys your first listens every day. Make sure you're subscribed up to everything we do on the network, not just those two shows. We've got the Peacock and Williamson NFL show, me and former NFL scout Matt Williamson talking about the entire league daily. Crocs got Locked On NFL draft coming at you daily. All of us double dipping here on the network. Marcus doing Locked On Dynasty football as well right here on the Locked On podcast network, all available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. So we know you mentioned it a little bit earlier there, Marcus, about the 49ers and Kyle Shanahan, how he likes to attack teams. He wants to make big guys cover and small guys tackle. right? And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty nice strategy there. And we saw the Seahawks say, OK, well, we want to stop the run first because you want to stop the run against the Kyle Shanahan team. So they brought people up but then they said, but we're going to go big nickel because we need to cover a little bit, too. And. Brock Purdy and the 49ers were just torching them on the over routes and the the dig routes. And there was just no there was just too much space behind the linebackers. So if you bring up guys, they're going to attack you behind the linebackers. If you're if you don't respect the run, then they're going to run the ball on you. And so I'm wondering what you think that defense will look like, what how the uh, Dallas Cowboys will face that 21 personnel against the San Francisco 49ers that can be so multiple. So I think the thing is you're going to have to be multiple on defense, right? You just can't stick with one personnel group and think, okay, this is our best lineup and that's how we're going to attack them because eventually Kyle Shanahan's going to find the weakest guy in the field and go at him, right? So you've got to use a bunch of different players and you've got to rotate guys in. But we saw last week Dallas Cowboys actually used four safeties on the field at, at some times because Tampa likes to throw the ball quick and get the ball to their playmakers on so them a lot of pay, plays after the catch. I wouldn't be surprised if we see something similar where, hey, if the 49ers want to run the ball uh, 12 straight times, that's fine. They did that last year in the meeting, and it didn't really result in a ton of points, right? They're not giving up these big chunk plays, but we want guys that are big, long, and can fly to the football, that can gang tackle. I would expect the Cowboys to use a lot of big nickel, a lot of different personnel groupings. You're going to see – uh, maybe two 350-pound nose tackles on the field at the same time. Look for Dan Quinn to be very, very exotic and multiple in this game. When it comes to Brock Purdy, one of the matchups that I think is really interesting here because if there's a, if there's something we've seen from Brock Purdy where you're like, okay, this is maybe something that could get him into trouble. It's it's his uh, it's his athleticism, getting out on the move, and a couple times maybe maybe bailing out a little too quick, and he'll bail out you know to his left side to uh, to Trent Williams blinds you know the blind side for him, mm -hmm. and he'll just bail out over there, and and he has this really innate sense of where rushers are, and he's able to step up in the pocket sometimes. And usually, great things happen when he steps up in the pocket, but some plays he'll he'll go the other way and he'll he'll exit the back door and there's times where he's kind of gotten into a little bit of trouble but luckily he's smart enough and he's pretty fearless back there but he's th he throws the ball away instead of taking that 15 yard sack or throwing an interception so you know even though it's not a great play he doesn't turn into a really bad play which is you know beyond his years with with what I've seen from him as a playmaker back there but Micah Parsons is a different dude, and if he tries to make that play like he made last week against the Seahawks where he doubles back to the left and the back to the right and then ditches a couple guys, those were big old slow dudes that were chasing him, and then he hits Brandon Ayuk who dropped the ball in the corner of the end zone, which would have been the highlight of the playoff so far, and 
probably the best incompletion, incompletion I saw this season. Micah Parsons will run him down if he tries to do that, right? And uh, and there's a lot of fast guys on that defense, too. So that's where I think it could get into trouble with Brock Purdy if you start losing the turnover battle and not even so much making a bad throw, but maybe a fumble or something like yeah. that. And so, um, I, and I wonder if there's other ways to sort of corral a young quarterback and make him feel like the pressure, the walls are closing in on him more than giving him escape routes. I, I will say the Cowboys defensive line, it's not very big, but what they do have is they have a lot of athleticism and a lot of guys that play with a really high motor. So if Purdy is going to hold the ball, that's when guys like Sam Williams and Dante Fowler and it, uh, Micah Parsons obviously could have a big impact. However, the longer Purdy holds the ball, the more matchups or mismatches he's going to see in the secondary. The Cowboys just don't have the corners to match up with the 49ers. Even Trevon Diggs, as great as he is, it's kind of a bad matchup for Brandon and Ayuk, and we saw it in the playoff game last year. They're missing their number two and number three corners in this game, Anthony Brown and Jordan Lewis. Xavier Rhodes started for them last week. He never played a snap for them in the regular season. Not a single snap, and he started for them last week. If Purdy can... Get, if he's protected and he can hold onto the ball a little bit, he's going to see some big, uh, some guys wide open in the secondary. Well, fortunately for the Dallas Cowboys, if that is their biggest weakness, uh, the 49ers really don't look to exploit outside guys as much. They're more of kind of, uh, you know, concepts and, you know, the, the routes from tight splits yep. and guys from the slot, deep over routes, crossers, and those things where sometimes it will be a guy maybe running away from a corner uh, on the outside, but if he passes it off, then he'll be fine. But, you know, they, are, they haven't been a team that says, okay, we have Brandon, not, at least for the most part, right? Where we have yep. Brandon Ayuk on the outside and he's going to line up against his number one corner and all right, you just have to beat this guy. You're going to run a hitch or you're going to run a curl. You're going to run an out. They typically don't do it from the outside. Now, from the slot, if there is a mismatch to be had there from a coverage standpoint, that's where the 49ers put, can potentially uh, take advantage of. But for something I've seen from Dallas Cowboys DBs, especially in the uh, last game against Tampa, man, those guys, long, athletic, they were really shrinking those throwing lanes and throwing windows. And then when you look at Brock Purdy, you know, Brian talked about the, you know, innate ability to kind of make plays and sometimes maybe be a little too confident. He got ran down by Simmons. He definitely can be get ran down by uh, Parsons. Well, also, he doesn't have like the biggest of arms. Yeah. So if you're really kind of forcing him to continuously make these tight window throws against these long arm, arm corners, I think that's another, you know, just another test that I want to see. Can he pass that test? And if so, then I think we've just seen everything and he's just the greatest quarterback ever. But I, I think that's something that uh, I, I look forward to kind of seeing how he handles that. Because it, look, it looked tough for Tom Brady. Sure. The, the Cowboys do have a lot of length in their secondary. There's only four defensive backs in the league right now that are 6'4 or taller, the Cowboys have three of them on the roster. Like, they are really long and athletic, and they're going to try to make Brock Purdy throw into some tight windows. Can he do it? Will he even try it? We'll see. It's amazing, too, the, the comps that Brock Purdy's getting. Uh, Pete Carroll called him Fran Tarkenton this week. Mm. And uh, we, we've seen Tony Romo. Uh, we've seen, you know, some of the later yep. round pick guys, you know, uh, of course, Kurt Warner, then Drew Brees has been thrown out there. Montana has been thrown out there. Like, it's crazy. The, he's not getting comp to Cooper Rush and Skylar Thompson. He's getting comp to Hall of Fame quarterbacks. And so it's, <laughs> it's wild what we're watching right now. It's almost disbelief. And uh, it, it's one of the craziest stories ever if, if Brock Purdy continues this run. But what's what's and i've said this a few times on crossovers to to other hosts and to your fan base that, that is listening right now it's amazing how good he's playing he's literally playing so well that he gives the 49ers a better chance that he's in there than what they had earlier on in the season like he's he, adding value to the offense that garoppolo yes. and trey lance didn't have right He's creating, and we, we never really got to see exactly what that was going to look like with Trey Lance, but he's definitely creating a lot more than Jimmy Garoppolo did, and he's not making mistakes wow. either. So, you know, if he keeps playing like he's playing, he actually gives you don't you don't turn to your third string rookie seventh round quarterback, and he gives you a better chance to win. But that's what we're seeing right now with the 49ers. Well, and, and not just that, uh, you talk about kind of you know giving you a better chance to win, or you know, the offense and the production. He's averaged thirty four points per game as a starting quarterback for the 49ers while being undefeated. And, 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 and on top of that, I mean, it's just uh, Jimmy Garoppolo in his six playoff starts, four touchdowns, six interceptions. 
Brock Purdy in his one NFL uh, postseason start, four touchdowns. He matched. He already matched Jimmy Garoppolo's touchdown total in in one game. I mean, it, it just that's it's kind of mind boggling to be honest. That's what I said. If it, if he wins this game and plays well, you can throw out all the Cooper Rush and Skylar Thompson talk. Like we're ta- now we're talking about him being on. Hey, is he doing what? Kurt Warner did, you know, yeah. leading the Rams to 30 points a game and winning the Super Bowl. Like, legitimately, those comps would start to make sense and be probably the most accurate. And I just saw this stat yesterday. The so the 40 almost 35 points. I think it's like 34.8 points per game. The 49ers are averaging with Brock Purdy in there, and which is more than the greatest show on turf, which was 32.9 points per game. Wild, absolutely yeah. wild. It's <laughs> prediction time, guys. How's this thing really gonna go on Sunday? 49ers Cowboys playoffs as it was destined to be next today's episode brought to you in part by our friends at built bar if you're looking for that delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories you're trying to be healthy in the new year right then you gotta try built bar we just got through the holidays I know my goal is to eat a little healthier I actually got a proactive and started before the holidays and tried to undo some of the damage early before uh, the holidays actually happened things are going well for me and a big part of that is built bars because you know when you reach for that treat you're getting something that is healthy and actually tasty most built bars are covered in 100% real chocolate, which really sets Built Bars off for me. You really feel like you're getting a treat. So here's what you do is you get rid of all the you know the bags of chips, all those really terrible for you snacks in that place that you know you're going to wander over to and reach in, whether it's in your glove box in your car or driving to work on a long commute or driving back home, you know, or uh, you skip lunch, you need a little treat. Maybe your desk at work, the pantry at home, obviously. Uh, get rid of the bad treats. Throw a box of Built Bars in there, and you'll thank me later because they are delicious and they are high in calories. Most Built Bars have 17 grams of protein, but only 130 calories and 4 grams of sugar. And, of course, you can get a, a box of Built Bars at Built.com, but you can also find them on store shelves now, including your local Walmart and Sam's Club. Head over to the pharmacy section of Walmart and find a four box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. And at Sam's Club, you can grab a 13-bar box of hit flavors like brownie batter and churro, and you can thank us later. And, of course, you can find Built Bars and all the flavors at Built.com. Before I make my prediction, Marcus, I, I want to know what, what the health status is of the Dallas Cowboys offensive line. Because on the other side, I mean, Mark Micah Parsons, who, correct me if I'm wrong, has been lining up a lot on the right side. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we'll try to move him yeah. around, get matchups on Mike McGlinchey. But, I mean, Micah Parsons versus Trent Williams, you don't get a better one-on-one matchup than that. So that's that's worth the, the price of admission right there. But on the other side with the 49ers defensive line and Nick Bosa, which who they do move around quite a bit, and the 49ers really rotate a lot of guys in there on the defensive line. What's the health status? How good is that? Cowboys offensive line playing because as you mentioned earlier that might be the key to the game yeah so just to remind everybody last year when the Cowboys played the 49ers Nick Bosa got hurt was that the first quarter the first half had to leave with a concussion uh and the 49ers still got 31 pressures against the Cowboys 31 the good news is the offensive line's playing better for the Cowboys this year but they do have injuries Jason Peters who started less last week at left tackle He's not going to play this week with a hip injury. That means Tyler Smith, the rookie, is going to play left tackle. Their center, Tyler Biotis, dealing with a high ankle sprain. Uh, he looked pretty limited uh, on Monday night. Tyron Smith, career left tackle, playing right tackle, still getting used to that, but their depth is completely gone. They've lost four tackles behind those guys. So they're starting five, relatively healthy, but behind them, Nothing. So if they happen to lose a guy in this game, it's going to be pretty detrimental. Could, could Tyler Smith, I mean, uh, can Smith, the kid, uh, the rookie, can he potentially slide back outside? Because I saw when they moved him inside, there was an injury to someone in the interior, and then they had to do this whole shuffle thing where they put Peters in, uh, in on you know at left tackle, and then put the kid in uh, Smith at left guard. Yep. Could he potentially find him way his way back to the outside? Yeah, I, I expect him to start at left tackle in this game and then sliding Connor McGovern back into left guard. And that might be a better combination for them because they tend to run the ball a little bit better when they have those two guys in the left side. But uh, still, it's a rookie left tackle from Tulsa against this 49ers pass rush. I, I know you're feeling good about how he's played this year. We'll see how good you're feeling about him, like two drives into this game. We'll, we'll find out pretty quickly. 
yeah, we might find out very quickly there what kind of game it's going to be in. I don't know last week that there's times where Nick Bosa had a tackle and a tight end and running back. And there was just like a, a whole dance party around him of guys trying to block him. But what that does is open up plays for, you know, Charles Amenahu and Samson Abelcom and, you know, Eric Armstead and the rest of the 49ers defense. So that's a huge one. And I really like that matchup for the 49ers and off the air, Marcus, we were talking a little bit about how, the margin for error for the 49ers has grown so much when you're scoring 30 points a game and you have what was the best regular season defense in the NFL, even if the defense gives up a big play, which they have done a time or two, and maybe even Brock Purdy makes a mistake. They've had, they've got a wide margin for error here. And I think this could be a pretty good game, but it's really hard for me to say that the 49ers won't win this game with the way that they're playing, the consistency they're playing with home team, home field advantage, uh, you know, a couple extra days, of rest as well from their Saturday matchup when the when the Cowboys played on Monday. So I got to take the 49ers in this one. I don't think anybody should be surprised by that. And, and actually, I misspoke earlier. It, the, the line started at three and a half this week, looking at bet online just a second ago. It's climbed up to four points now. That still doesn't scare me off. I think the 49ers can win this one by, by more than four points. So um, I'm going with the San Francisco 49ers. Look, both of these teams are super talented. Like these are two of the better rosters in the league right now. Um, but the, I think the only reason that the Cowboys have a chance to win is they just have the more established quarterback in deck, right? He's He's been in the playoffs before. He's played in big games. He's played against this 49ers defense before. And there is, I mean, as great as Brock Purdy has played, you have to imagine as we get further in the playoffs, there's going to be a little bit of nerves that set in, right? So I do think the Cowboys will keep it close, but I'm picking the 49ers to win as well. I Frankly, I just think this is the best team in the NFL. And I think once they win this game, they'll have a huge signature win. And I think that's going to propel them to the Super Bowl. I- I'm picking the 49ers to win a close one. Let's go 27, 23. Croc, do you have any messages for your brother who is no doubt listening to this show as a Cowboys fan <laughs> uh, with uh, about this game that's about to happen Sunday? We- we've talked a lot about it. Uh, our group chat is going crazy. I'm pretty sure it's going crazy right now as my daughter, my daughter's playing on my phone, but uh, for me, it just comes down to what I know and don't know. And for the Dallas Cowboys team, who I think is very talented, and I thought they were extremely talented last year, you head into that wild card round, number one scoring the offense, number one yardage offense, and then, dang, it kind of hit a wall against the 49ers a little bit. And I thought Jimmy Garoppolo kind of kept them, kept the Cowboys in that game. Yeah. Well, in this game, again, I, I just know a little bit more of who the 49ers are, what style of play that they're going to play. Uh, Cowboys, we talked about a little bit earlier, just a little bit too inconsistent. So I have the 49ers winning, but I mean, shoot, if you told me the Cowboys won this game, I wouldn't be surprised because, I mean, they are extremely talented. And for all the th- reasons that Masha talked about, you know, with the quarterback that is, you know, just more established in the NFL, kind of has been in some of these uh, bigger moments. Uh, I, I think there is something to that, as well as the coach, right? Their coaches played in these moments as well. Mm-hmm. So I, the Cowboys aren't going to roll over by any means. I, I like a lot of what they have, but just a little bit too much 49ers and, and just that consistency. I mean, we, did we even mention Christian McCaffrey and some of the and the weapons and Debo Samuel and, and George Kittle, and we didn't even talk about those guys. And uh, Elijah Mitchell at running. It's, it's just kind of – it's a hard – it's a hard team to stop for an entire game. It, yeah. it just is. With Kyle Shanahan calling plays. It's nearly impossible because you have to play the 49ers straight up with all the weapons they have. And they've got an advantage somewhere when you do that. It it just makes it so difficult to fend against this football team right now. And it's it's the improvement of the offense that I think has really made this team uh, put on on a new level and into a new tier going into the playoffs this year. But of course, Levi Stadium will be rocking Sunday. I can't wait for this one. Can the Cowboys get to young Brock Purdy? Oh, man, I can't wait. Uh, Marcus, as always, thank you for joining us here on another Locked On Podcast Network crossover episode. I love these postseason crossovers with the Cowboys. I hope we can keep doing it yes. uh, for, the, for the extended future here for uh, you know the next 20 years or so as Brock Purdy cements himself in his during his Hall of Fame career, no doubt. Um, thanks, everybody, for making Locked On 49ers and Locked On Cowboys your first listens. Make sure you check out Peacock and Williamson, Locked On NFL Draft, Locked On Dynasty Football as well. And we'll talk to you tomorrow right here on the Locked On Podcast Network.